Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward. That is Jake Stoneburner. You know that it's time for some tight end buck IQ. He's back in. It's tight ends week at Letterman Row. So it's it's an annual off-season plea. Stoney, you have the floor. Who needs the football this year? Tight ends, as always, especially with young quarterbacks. We're, we're the young quarterback's best friend out there. So with a senior, junior tight end coming into his form as one of the best tight ends in the country, you should lean on him pretty heavily, we hope. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Like Jeremy Rucker, we've been talking about him so long, really the entirety that Letterman Row has existed. He doesn't get a buck IQ here anymore. We're going to talk more about some of these young guys. And, and Stoney, you look at the situation. I think Luke Farrell, you and I have talked about him a bunch. He may be the most underrated uh, loss for Ohio State this offseason. And Jake Hausman, what he could provide as a blocker. You know, we've seen Ohio State go with those big packages and let him uh, move people around. You know, trying to find that second tight end to go with Jeremy Ruckert, that's that's a little bit of a bigger deal maybe than people recognize. Yeah, because, I mean, Luke, he was a jack-of-all-trades out there. Not that Jeremy's not, but having both of those, being able to block, run, and catch, um, you don't really find two of those in one tight end room that are that talented quite frequently in college football. Yep. So, yeah, maybe he wasn't making the – I mean, he made some splash plays, but the same type of maybe name recognition that Jeremy had, he was just as good. And trying to replace that with guys who haven't really even played the position in some aspects and some guys who are just, you know, brand new to the job or brand new to college football, um, they got a big they got a big shoes to fill and filling up Luke and Hausman's shoes, you know. So what will be, you know, the toughest part of that transition? Because we know that Cade Stover will – throw his body around. He, he, when he played linebacker, he'll hit. Um, and, and he's had the football in his hands when he was in high school. Uh, Joe Royer's kind of in maybe that Ruckert mold. He was a more of a wide receiver trying to fill out. Like, all these things, I guess, are, are wants. And what makes tight end play so difficult? You know, what's the one thing that they would focus on maybe heading into August? Um, I think just being on the same page with the quarterback and the offensive coordinator as far as what, what they're expecting out of you. They don't – they're not going to ask you to start and you know be out there and make all the plays, but you are going to have to go in and make an impact, whether that's being the sixth man on the line and blocking while Jeremy goes and runs a route, or you go run a route, just being on that in the making sure you're running the right routes, run this right depth. Because that's what's going to give the quarter confidence to do the right things. And at the end of the day, that's what's going to get you on the field is you know checking your cues and making sure you're doing all the right things out there. Um, and following Jeremy's lead, I'm sure he's a great leader. He's a great player and kind of just seeing what he does and trying to replicate it. Yeah, so there's only so much that we can learn from the spring game, but the tight ends did get their hands on a couple passes. And, and just to get a closer look, we're going to have Stoney take us back to April and what maybe these, some of these young guys can do right now for Buckeye Q. Let's roll the tape. All right, Stoney, you know how these spring games work. I mean, they're some going to be one or two routes that these guys have to run. They're only going to get thudded up. But, hey, tight ends want the football in any situation, right? Here you Absolutely. go. <laughs> Anytime you can catch a ball in the shoe is a good thing. So this is the, this is a, you know, I've talked to you guys enough. This is one of those first ones that you ever put in the playbook for a tight end. And I think this is Cade Stover here. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's the secret here? What's We're going to see this route a couple of times probably, but uh, what do you work with here? What are you supposed to look for? Um, we call it, I just call these a home route. You want to get like six, seven yards over the ball, over the center. Just be, a, almost be a check down for a quarterback um, to, looks like they're running a bunch of hitches. And so either way, that's home route, hitches on the outside, just gives a little center option for the quarterback. And that's an easy six, seven yard gain. Even well, it depends if that guy makes that tackle. But you're just trying to sit over the quarterback and be an option for him. And you can see he's, he's wide open. Um, and that kind of goes back to what we were talking about. What they need to do is just make these plays right here. Um, it's, they seem so simple, you know, six yard catch. But that's what's going to gain the offense coordinator's confidence, the quarterback's confidence. That's what's going to get you on the field. Um, just knowing your basic plays and making those basic basic plays is going to help you get on the field as a young guy or someone in the position. Yeah, especially I think we've talked about that a number of times in the past too, is that you're going to have a young quarterback. Uh, you're, going to, you're going to want maybe some of these easy, easy throws and know that that's going to be there. And this, this is a different sort of variation. It's probably, you tell me, probably called the same thing, but you're just coming from a different spot formationally. Yeah. Same idea, you know, you're trying to get over the over top of the ball five, six yards to the, right in the quarterback's view. Um, and if you're wide open, you're probably the quarterback's first read. It's, I mean, look how easy that is, six, seven yards, probably even more after on that one. Um, but it's the exact same play as Cades. You just want to get over top of the ball, get open, be an, a viable option for the quarterback to make the play. Um, Post up on that official? 
Yeah, use, use everything you got. Yeah, he, he did a great job. He, he saw the defenders. You know, he a lot of that times people run and they get covered. They just stand in front of the top, the center and the linebackers right there. Or both these guys did a good job of getting open and finding that open space. So, and that's telling me they can at least get a feel of the defense and a feel of the zone, which which is a lot harder than most people think. And this is another sort of this has become a staple of of the Ohio State playbook over the last you know since you were around. Really, just some of the play action and and get that tight end out there in the flat. So you've got to be able to handle this. What's the key to running what Joe Royer does here? Uh, you want to sell the run because a lot of the times, you know, you're coming in and blocking that guy, sealing him off or pass protecting. And so if you can make him flinch and pause just for a second so he can't get up to that quarterback and you can delay his rush, that's why he gets wide open. And he, he even does a good enough job that you can see the linebackers, actually linebackers just had bad eyes. They were on the quarterback there. Um, but he was able to slow up just enough that all three of those guys bit pretty hard, and you can see they're all out of position, and that's why it's an easy touchdown. Yeah, we'll give uh, we'll give the long snapper playing linebacker the benefit of the doubt there, but it's still a play that that they've got to execute. And this was the, this next one coming up here, Stony. We'll go back to Cade Stover. You know, we've been talking about him as potentially being that number two tight end. This didn't go down as a reception, but if if I'm thinking about back to the spring game. Just seeing this at the end is one of the things that stuck into my mind more than anything heading into the summer. Oh, yeah. You know, that's not a play that any, just any high, average tight end can make. Uh, those home routes they were catching earlier, you should be able to make those plays if you're a Division One athlete. These, yeah. this, this is another level, especially a guy coming from defense. Um, shows some incredible ball skills and hand-eye coordination. I think that gets me excited. should get the coaches excited that I mean, they have someone that can make some serious plays. looks like a lot like what Jeremy can do when he's out there. Luke Farrell had a couple one-handed catches. It seems to be in the tight end blood, I guess, recently. Yeah, you guys have much better ball skills than anybody thinks. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? I've been preaching that for about a decade now, but who am I? I guess I'm preaching it to nobody. Well, you've got a place to do it here always on Letterman Row for Buck IQ. Cade Stover trying to make a push. Joe Royer. Uh, oh. Sam Hart. We also got G. Scott. We could talk about him maybe more when we get to August, but yep. always love getting that tight end insight from Jake Stoneburner. Stoney, yeah. thanks for the time, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, and go Bucks. All right, for Stoney, I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time at Letterman Row for Buck IQ.